Hi everyone, so we've got a new series of videos for the exam question walkthrough series, so organic mechanisms for this one. I'll probably do about 20 of these um, and I'll put the link to the playlist at the top of the screen now for you. So what I'll do is for each one put the question on the screen and you can have a look at that, pause the video and then play it when you're ready for the answers. So I hope you find the video helpful. Uh, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do so and really massively helps me out. And please leave a comment in the comment section what you think of the video, what sort of topics would you like to see me do next. All right, so here's the question. So like I said before, pause the video and then play on for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. So I've drawn up compound A on the board with the HBr molecule. So I'm gonna do both products. The question only asks for one of them, but I can use both of the products uh, to explain the last part of the question, which one would be the major product. Okay, so the first part of the mechanism um, starts the same for either product. So we'll need a dipole across the HBr bond, so slightly positive on the hydrogen slightly negative on the bromine and that's because bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So then a pair of electrons in the pi bond is attracted to that slightly positive hydrogen. So we show that by a curly arrow. Just make sure that it goes from the middle of uh, one of the bonds in the double bond and go to that H delta plus. So the knock-on effect of that is the pair of electrons in the HBr bond, which are already sort of being pushed down, um, or being pulled down, sorry, towards the bromine, they're going to be repelled completely onto the bromine, and it's going to break that HBr bond by heterolytic fission. So heterolytic fission is when a covalent bond breaks, and one atom receives both of the electrons. So you can see that's what's happening in, in that bond there. Okay, so the two possible products. So the left down the left hand side of the board, I'll put the hydrogen on this carbon here. So just quickly draw up um, what we've got. So CH3 still. Let's say that's that original hydrogen. There's the new hydrogen. So the pair of electrons that were in the pi bond are now here. Uh, the sigma bond is still intact between the two carbons. And then we need two methyl groups on here. Okay, so that's that there. Now, this carbon on the right-hand side of the double bond has effectively lost an electron because it owned one of the electrons in the pi electron pair. That's over here now. So that carbon's lost an electron, so it's got a positive charge. So we call this a carbocation. I'll come back to that uh, when we explain which one's formed more than the other okay uh, and then the bromine has gained an electron so it's got the electron that used to belong to the hydrogen so this is now a bromide ion br minus it's going to show a lone pair on the br minus because all we need to do now is form a covalent bond between the br minus and the carbon plus we show that with that curly arrow there so that's going to generate this product here Okay, so we'll come back to that when we've looked at the other one, and then we'll compare uh, the two carbocations. Right, so moving on to this one, so all I'm going to do is put this hydrogen on this carbon now. So that means we need this here, so CH3, CH3, there's that new hydrogen. So what have we got on here? We've got a CH3, oops, we've got a hydrogen, positive charges on there now. Got Br minus, put a lone pair on, and then we need to uh, connect them with that pair of electrons, that curly arrow. So the other product is going to be this. Okay. Oops. 
bit of a mess, sorry. Put that more in the middle. Right, okay, so how do we explain which one's formed more than the other? It's to do with the type of carbocations we've got here. So we'll start with this left-hand one. So what we need to be doing is looking at how many carbon groups are bonded to the carbon with the positive charge. So you can see we've got one, two, three. So let's call this a carbon group. So this is a tertiary carbocation. Or you could say a tertiary carbocation intermediate. If we have a look at the other one, so again, look at the carbon with the positive charge on. We've got one carbon group, that one there, and this is a carbon group here. So it's got two carbon groups, so this is a secondary carbocation intermediate. So we need to know which one is more stable out of those two, and it's this one here, it's the tertiary one. So tertiary carbocation intermediates are more stable than secondary ones. So more of this is gonna happen than this one. So this here is the major product. So all you would need to say is your answer is the major product forms from the more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate but it's always a good idea to sort of um, annotate your mechanism like I've done there because whoever's marking your work will give you credit for that.